In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a Kurinuki teapot. So basically, I start with hollowing out a piece of clay that I've kind of already shaped into a teapot shape. I then go in and use a large loop tool to make the handle or kind of the attachment to where the handle will go. Um, so this is like a little protrusion out of the front and then also I'll make one at the back. I then use the large loop tool and just go around and shape the spout. And here I'm switching to a um, large spatula, which I take the bulk of the clay out from the bottom of the teapot. Here I'm shaping the attachment to where the handle will attach to the teapot at the back. I take some time to shape this using my fingers. I then go back in and shape the exterior of the pot. So here I'm doing the spout. Once I'm happy with the shape of the outside, I then go back into the teapot and remove some more bulk from the walls. I then bore a hole through the spout to allow the tea to pour out of the teapot and also use a blunt wooden knife to make the gallery, which is where the teapot lid will sit. Here I'm just pushing clay down from the um, uh, the top of the teapot and making a kind of ridge which is where the teapot lid will sit. I then clean it up by using a sponge. Here I've placed the lid on. So this lid was made from a cone of clay that I cut out from the top of the teapot. And this was flipped around and here you can see I've just shaped a knob on the top using my fingers. I then go around and shape the outside using a spatula. So here I'm taking time to produce facets in the outside of the teapot to um, look more decorative. So this is what the final teapot would look like. So it's important to be a bit more thoughtful when making these cuts. And here I'm just cleaning up the um, attachment to where the handle will be. So here I'm putting, um, so scoring in two holes and then using a knife to um, make the hole go through the attachment. And this is where I will attach either string or metal wire for the handle of the pot. At this point um, in time, the clay is a little bit harder because I've left it out to harden up, which is preferable when making the cuts to the outside. I then go and um, carve the lid while it's on top of the teapot. So this is important because you want the lid to be seamless um, sitting on top of the teapot. And to help to do this, I carve facets that extend from the lid down to the body of the teapot. I also clean up the knob that I made at the top. So this knob is hollowed out, which facilitates um, holding the lid in one hand. I also here cut two um, triangles out of the knob using a knife. This was just so that I know the orientation of the lid on top of the teapot. So the lid will only fit one way, so this helps you to put the lid back in the right place once it's removed. Here I'm just cleaning out the spout, so thinning it out a little bit. I then go and 
make more cuts to the outside where I think the teapot needs it. This part takes time so I regularly stand back from the teapot and see the overall profile and shape and see what areas I need to remove. Here I'm just going around the bottom and removing a lot of the weight out of the base, giving it a more beveled um, edge at the base of the teapot. I then flip it over and again just take more weight from the bottom. Here I'm just using a metal rib to flatten out the base of the teapot so that it sits, sits flat on the table. And then also use it just to clean up some of the edges around the base. And here I'm just using my maker's mark. I then take off the lid and remove some of the weight from the inside um, so that it's more of a, a dome shape. Here I'm using a small loop tool to carve a spiral. These are just more decorative carvings I like to do in my Kuranuki pieces. And there you have it, that's the final teapot. I hope this was helpful for some of you guys. Um, you can find more information linked in the description down below where I have a full blog post on this process. Happy pottering!